coming out of the crisis, is starting to grow again, we'll take a closer look at what does that tell us about competitiveness challenges that we continue to face and what is it that the region can do when working together. Second theme is what about collaboration? Uh, where does that stand? So we'll look as, uh, as we did in the past at what our main institutions in the region is doing in order to enhance regional cooperation. Uh, we'll take a specific look at the EU Baltic Sea region strategy. Uh, now what we try to do, you know, because there are many other people that look at this of course, we, we try to look at a few specific projects. We try to profile them and learn a bit from them uh, what are the things that are working, what are the things that we might be able to improve as we move forward. Now the last two are more specific uh, uh, to this year. Uh, the third topic though th th then is, is entrepreneurship. We want to look at the role of small and medium-sized enterprises in the economies of our region. We know that they are a main driver of job growth, which is one of the critical challenges that we are facing throughout the region. So we want to understand what is the role that they currently play, what are the policy actions that are taking throughout the region, uh, and we also want to use uh, the insights from academic research to really find out what is it that we've learned about what drives entrepreneurship, uh, not only in our regions, uh, but, but more generally. Final topic then really brings us to the host of this year's conference, Poland. We want to lay, uh, take a closer look uh, at uh, where Poland's competitiveness stands, what the policy issues are, and how Poland should relate to the Baltic Sea region. Um, Poland was, one of, was the only, in fact, EU member country that had positive growth rates uh, in, uh, during the crisis. We, were, we talked about that at last year's summit. Uh, but where does it stand now? Uh, what are the issues ahead of the country? Uh, and how can it use its kind of closer orientation towards the Baltic Sea region, which in part is really reflected in why we're meeting in Gdansk to launch the report, uh, uh, to become a driver of those processes? Looking a little bit more closely at the 2011 picture in terms of regional competitiveness across the Baltic Sea region, I think it is important to distinguish two dimensions. One is economic outcomes. Those change relatively quickly year to year, and they give you a sense of where we stand in terms of the cycle. But then there are also the more long-term competitiveness issues that our report also tries to cover. Now let's first look at the economic outcomes. Uh, we see that our region is really back uh, at the top of Europe. We have been doing and are doing better than most other parts uh, of the European Union, and that's a strong positive. Now we'll try to look a little bit closer at what drives exactly that type of uh, outcomes, uh, where, where is the specific profile of strength and weaknesses in terms of economic performance outcomes. Uh, we also still have a huge level of heterogeneity across the, country, uh, across the countries of this region, you know, Sweden pushing ahead very strongly, Germany uh, developing very strongly, others like Latvia and Iceland, you know, coming out of a crisis but really having stabilized, uh, and the other countries, you know, somewhere between those uh, all fa facing their individual challenges. Now, if you take the more long-term look in terms of competitiveness, I think we're seeing again that uh, the, the issue is how do we reignite the growth engine in our regions. We have battled the crisis successfully, the cyclical downturn, but what are the fundament fundamental factors that could support growth? Uh, we know that our region is relatively competitive, competitive um, and that hasn't changed much over the last couple of years. Uh, but there is a new question, how do we need to develop and enhance our competitiveness? And what role does regional, competitive, uh, regional collaboration play in this context so that we can uh, not only kind of overcome the crisis, but really start a new chapter of growth uh, for the Baltic Sea region? I continue to believe that the step towards the Baltic Sea region strategy uh, by the European Commission and the Union was a very important one, and probably one that has been underappreciated uh, certainly outside of our region. Uh, you know, let's, let's remember where we stood in the past. Uh, no policy could be made uh, at the EU level that was not uh, the same for everyone. Uh, that increasingly doesn't work. And I think the political forces towards more nationalization are very strong at the moment, and I'm sure we're going to talk about those uh, at Gdansk. Mm -hmm. The regional strategy, I think, allows us to be much more specific, attuned with the needs of individual member countries, uh, but without going back to the national, uh, national level, really forcing us uh, uh, to, to leverage our common capabilities. Uh, and I think that's an important step that, uh, that was taken with the strategy. Now, there are a lot of things that still need to happen that we need to work out, how to govern this, you know, should there be a budget line, what are the right type of activities. Uh, but this is really what we should uh, uh, um, now deal with. Uh, I think the strategic direction is important and, and certainly is something that uh, I hope the rest of uh, uh, Europe will take a larger notice of.